Hi, this is Mrs. Stevens, and I'm here to go over test one with you, parts two, three, and four. So the first question, question 25, has to do with um, the mortgage payments, monthly mortgage payments. You're given a formula, you're given the interest rate, you're given the fact that it's compounded monthly, you're given the fact that you borrowed $180,000 for 15 years. And the question is, what would be the monthly mortgage payment? So I just plugged in all the numbers that they gave me and I put it on my calculator. Don't forget to use the alpha y equals for the n over d button so that you get that fraction. Okay. Next question is question 26. It has to do with throwing a water balloon off the top of a building. So they give you the height as a quadratic they want to know when will it hit the ground. So you're trying to figure out t when the height is 0. So I set the equation equal to 0, and I solved it by factoring. I rejected the negative time answer. Question 27, they give you data. Um, they put it already into their calculator. They got an exponential regression equation, which they give you. They give you this equation, y equals 5.528, to the x. And then um, put in all the x values. You get all different y values out that are the predicted y values as opposed to the actual y values. And then you see down here that it really starts to be not a good fit. Right here, not good. Right here, not good. Right here, not good. And so Manuel concludes that it's not an exponential regression, that that's not a good fit. But the reason why is because this point 550, um, 550 threw everything off. You forced it to fit an exponential. I'm trying to fit that outlier. So it threw off the model, um, which is why your predicted values are so far from your actual values. But it actually is a good exponential model, except for that 550. OK, question 28 says you're buying oil at $3.75 per gallon. So n is the number of gallons, so your cost would be 3.75 n. That's the first part. What would be a good domain and range? Well, I figured you can't buy negative numbers of gallons, so your n is between 0 and 500, and the 500 is because um, size of the tank. You can only fit 500 gallons. And so your cost, if you bought 0, your cost would be 0. And if you bought 500, your cost would be 1,875. OK, question 9 says you have an experiment. You have a control group. You have an experimental group. I just summarized it up here by saying um, x bar is 10 for the control group. It says your average number of 6 days is 10 standard deviation of 1.6. And in the experimental group, you have an x bar of 7.2 with a standard deviation of 0.7. You're trying to say that the people in the experimental group you know, got sick less. Um, if you were to raise that standard deviation to 1.2, then that means that your data is more variable, which means that there's less of a chance that this difference is significant. Okay, question 30 says Catherine wants to make a box with a volume of 20. So I wrote down volume of 20. The length is 5 more than the width, so I started translating that. L is 5 plus W. The depth is 1 less than the width. 
And so I'm using W to represent the width. The volume of a box is um, length times width times height, all three dimensions multiplied. It has to come out to be 20. So I multiplied these two together. And then I multiplied in the W, put 20 on the other side. Um, because of the four pieces here, I did factor by grouping. I got three different answers because it's a cubic function. W equals negative 4, W equals radical 5, and W equals negative radical 5. The only one that will work is positive radical 5. So that gives you the width, the length, and the depth. And it says give your answers both in radical form and to the nearest hundredth. Okay, question 31 says uh, the amount of money left on a loan that Kira owes her grandmother is represented by K of T. And then talk about all the pieces. So first it says, is it growth or decay? You know it's decay because the B is 0.88, which is less than 1. Um, the amount of money you owe is going down, the amount of money she owes. A0 is the starting amount. That's the amount that she borrowed. And the percent change, the R, is 12%. That means she's paying back 12% each year. Question 32 is a rational equation. The first step is to get common denominator. And you give everybody that common denominator. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And then you solve the top equation. OK, now we're into part threes. Question 33, um, they gave you all these months, all these temperatures. You put them all in the calculator. Then you do statistics, calculator, option C, which is a sine regression. Use three iterations, L1, L2, and you leave the period blank. Um, and then it gives you this equation. Round your answers to the nearest hundredth, it says. Using your regression, what would you predict for September? I plugged in 9. You have to make sure you're in radian mode to plug in 9 there. And then how far is this from the actual value? Well, we got 73 degrees. On the chart, it actually said 94, um, 74 degrees. So you're 1 degree lower. Okay, question 34 says you have an angle of 5 pi over 3. Remember, pi radians is 180 degrees. So that's 300 degrees. And 300 degrees is in the fourth quadrant. I drew it here on the picture. Um, because it's a reference angle of 60, the coordinates are 1 half radical 3 over 2. But because it's in the fourth quadrant, the y coordinate is negative. Um, or the sine is negative, the cosine is positive there. And a coterminal angle with that would be going clockwise. Remember, clockwise is negative, counterclockwise is positive. So we're going back 60 degrees, which would be negative pi over 3. OK, question 35, I didn't write down the table, but it basically asks you one, two, three, four, five different, wait, four different probability questions based on the table above. So the first question is just, what's the chances that you choose a student who has an average between 70 and 85? So that's the middle column, so 63 people out of 110. Second part is, what's the chances you have pick someone who has an average between 85 and 100, and they did less than 70% of their homework? So that's just 1 out of 110. Because of the word and, you need to be in 
third row and third column. Third one says you have 85 to 100 percent of your homework complete, or you have an average of 85 to 100. So the first criteria, 85 to 100 percent of your homework complete, there's 39 people there. Or you want to have an average of 85 to 100, there's 31 people there. But you double counted the 22 people. Sorry, this right here says double counted <laughs> those 22 people, so you have to subtract them off. And then D says, what are the probability you pick someone who has an average of 70 or higher? So that's the second two columns, 15 and 22 people, given that the student does 85 to 100 percent of their homework. So you're only taking people out of the 39 who do that much homework. Okay. And then question 36 was just long division. Don't forget you subtract down. And don't forget to write your final answer with the remainder as a fraction. Then the second part says, is it a factor? No, it's not a factor because the remainder is not zero. OK, the last question, a big trig graphing question. Um, I wrote down the equation here at the top. The negative in the front means that you start low. The 40 is your amplitude. The period is 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over pi over 6. Keep change flip, you get 12. So that means you have key points every three months. And your wrap line or midline or vertical shift is at 50. So I sketched a graph here. I put a dotted line at 50. This is the midline. Um, it starts low ends low after 12 months. And then I did another period because it says in the directions graph it from 0 to 24. So you're getting two whole periods there. And you make sure you show your five key points, the highs, the lows, and the crossings. 